All right, this video is 4-5, isosceles and equilateral triangles. The objective is to use and apply properties of isosceles and equilateral triangles. And the focus question for this lesson is what are the properties of isosceles and equilateral triangles? Here's your vocab you need to know for this video. Number one, legs. Legs are the congruent sides of an isosceles triangle. So if you look down here, we have an isosceles triangle. These two sides that are marked congruent here are the legs. Number two, base, the third, which is the third side of an isosceles triangle. So this green side here is the base of the triangle. The base does not always have to be the bottom of the triangle. It can be on the side. You just have to look. You have to find basically find your legs first, which has your two congruent sides. Then the other side is considered the base. The vertex angle. The vertex angle is the angle formed by the two congruent legs. Okay, so this is your vertex angle. And the base angles are the other two angles of the triangle. Okay, and they are also congruent. Base angles of an isosceles triangle will always be congruent. Write that down. And then a corollary, a theorem that can be proved easily by another theorem. All right, make sure you have these written down. You'll need to know what these words mean. All right, a couple theorems. Let's get these out of the way. Theorem 4.3 is the isosceles triangle theorem. It says if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. What does that mean? Here we have triangle ABC. Side AC is congruent to side BC. So that means that angle A is congruent to angle B. All right, that's how it's going to be. All right, these two sides are congruent. So the angles opposite those two sides will be congruent as well. That side, that angle congruent to that angle, just like this picture shows. The converse says if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent. So here we have our triangle ABC. We have angle A congruent to angle B, which means that side is congruent to that side, which is what this picture shows. All right, so your isosceles triangle theorem, if you have two congruent sides, the angles opposite those are congruent. The converse of that, if you have two congruent angles, the sides opposite those are congruent. All right, and remember an isosceles triangle is a triangle with only two congruent sides. Here's a problem. Let's, let's try to work this out real quick. It says, using the isosceles triangle theorems, it says, because angle C is congruent to angle A, AB is congruent to CB, by the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. Because remember, the converse says if you have two congruent angles, the sides opposite those angles are congruent. So BC is congruent to AB. All right. And then also it says what proves angle A congruent to angle ADE? So this angle right here. Well, what proves it congruent is you have two congruent sides in triangle AED. AD is congruent to ED, which means since those are congruent, that means the two base angles here are congruent. So A is congruent to E, and this also proves E congruent to C as well. All right, because we said A is congruent to C, and we said E is congruent to A, so E is congruent to C as well. All right. So let's try this. Here's a this is gonna this is a U try. They're renaming them as got it's now. So number one A is triangle, I mean is angle WVS congruent to angle S. And then is side TR congruent to side TS. And then can you conclude that triangle RUV is an isosceles triangle? So see if you can work these out real quick. Okay, so let's answer the first question. Is WVS congruent to angle S? Well, you have to look at these sides right here. Okay, so we have two congruent sides, which means the angle opposite those sides are congruent, which means the answer to this is yes. All right, angle S is congruent to angle V. Now, is TR congruent to TS? And explain. Well, 
now since we know r is congruent to v and we proved s congruent to v that means r is congruent to v and since this big triangle here since these two angles are congruent that means these two sides are congruent so the answer here is yes as well by the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem that's supposed to be a triangle right there okay so we we have now proved that triangle rts is an isosceles triangle and down here we have wvs as an isosceles triangle as well now can we conclude that this is an isosceles triangle mm, not really we can't because we don't we we don't know anything we can't really prove angle v congruent to r nor can we prove these two sides congruent so no we don't have enough info not enough info because we can't now if we could prove v congruent to r would have plenty of info and we can go oh yeah those are congruent no problem or if we knew that these two sides were congruent we could say the same thing but we don't have enough information here so no we cannot prove b is not enough information okay theorem four five and then i got a couple corollaries here theorem four five says if a line bisects the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle then the line is also the perpendicular bisector of the base what does that mean all that means is this we have an isosceles triangle here all right we got two sides congruent if CD bisects this angle what that means is this has to be not only perpendicular but also bisect this angle I mean bisect this side just like they've drawn here okay because the reason is is since these two sides are congruent C is exactly the vertex angle here C is exactly over the midpoint of line AB so if you were to draw a the and the perpendicular bisector would go perfectly straight down being being perpendicular and cutting the side exactly in half all right so if you have a bisector this angle it's also a perpendicular bisector of the base of the isosceles triangle all right here's our two corollaries if the triangle is equilateral then it is also equal angular because if you remember the angles the base angles in an isosceles triangle are congruent okay because the sides opposite the angles opposite the congruent sides are congruent well in an equal in an equilateral triangle all three sides are the same length so that means all three angles are also the same measure and the corollary to theorem um, 4 4 is basically the converse of this one if it's equal angular then it's also equilateral for the same reason you know sides opposite congruent angles are congruent okay that's that's the main thing to remember sides opposite congruent angles are congruent and angles opposite congruent sides are congruent okay that's the thing to remember like I, I could have said that whole thing without these two corollaries angles opposite congruent sides are congruent and sides opposite congruent angles are congruent that's the important thing to take away from these two corollaries okay that's the important thing to take away from these two corollaries all right let's try this problem shall we and then there's a I got it down here so what is the value of X so here we go since a B is congruent to CD I mean CB by the isosceles triangle theorem we know that a is congruent to C all right so this is 54 degrees we know this is 54 degrees all right and since this bisects this angle see how they're both marked congruent since this bisects this angle this means this is a right angle all right we know that by the by one of the um by the converse okay I'm sorry 
not the converse, but anyway. So we know that this is a right angle. So 90 plus 54 plus x equals 180. Add those together, subtract it from 180. X is 36 degrees. Okay. So these are things you're going to have to look out for. All right. See, I didn't even look at this. I was just looking at the picture. Since I know that DB bisects the angle B, which is the vertex angle. Okay. I know this is the vertex angle because it's made by the two congruent sides. I know this is a perpendicular bisector. So I automatically knew this was a right angle. Since I looked and saw this was an isosceles triangle, since this was 54 degrees, I knew this had to be 54 degrees. So now I've got two of the three angles of a triangle. So add them together, subtract from 180, and get 36. Okay? They basically did the same thing I did. All right? Now what I want you to do is, instead of angle A being 54, suppose it's 27. Now find the, value, find the new value of X. All right, so now, instead of 54, we have 27. All right, this is still the perpendicular bisector, so I still know that's 90. And this is 20, whoops, that was a little small. Angle C here is also 27. So 90 plus 27 is 7. 9 and 2 is 11. So it's 117, 180, minus 117. All right, uh, let's borrow from here, make that a 7, make that a 10. This is a 3. 7 minus 1 is 6, and then of course these are 0. So now x equals 63 degrees. Okay, hopefully you got that. All right, because again, since we knew this was an isosceles triangle, we know that c is the same as a, so it's 27. We know that since this bisects this angle, we know it's perpendicular to the base, so we knew this was a right angle. So 27 plus 90 is 117, 180 minus 117 is 63, so that means X has to be 63 degrees. There's no way around it. It has to be 63 degrees. All right. That focus question at the beginning, hopefully now you've answered it. It says, what are the properties of an isosceles and equilateral triangles? Answer, equilateral triangles have congruent sides and congruent base angles. That should be have two congruent sides and two congruent base angles. And equilateral triangles have three congruent sides and three congruent angles. Now one thing we didn't go over is the angles of an equilateral triangle. Well if they're all three congruent, what do they have to be? They have to be 180 divided by 3. So the angles so the, all the angles of an equilateral triangle will be 60 degrees. There's no way around it. All right, you have an equilateral triangle, so all the angles have to be the same measure. So they all have to be 60 degrees, because 60 and 60 is 120, plus 60 is 180. No way around it. All equilateral triangles will always have 60 degree angles. Okay? which also means that all equilateral triangles are similar, which we'll get to in later. But all equilateral triangles are also similar, but not necessarily congruent. Same thing with isosceles triangles. Okay. Here's your ticket in the door. Number one, what is the measure of angle A? So find the measure of angle A in, all of, in both of those triangles. Number two, what is the value of X? So find the value of X in both of those triangles. Number three, what is the relationship between sides and angles for each type of triangle? And number four, Claudia drew an isosceles triangle. She asked Sue to mark it. Explain why the marking of the diagram is incorrect. All right. So check it in the door. Make sure you have this ready to go tomorrow before you come to class. Good luck.